Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Goody. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine and surgery at the Homerton University Hospital, London. As happens, I'll be reviewing a paper which has clinical implications. And the paper today is about end repeat surgery for endometrioma. This was written by Mizi et al. in Fertility Sterility 2015. And what it looks towards is it asks the question whether second surgery for recurrent endometriomas is more harmful to healthy ovarian tissue and ovarian reserve when compared to the first surgery. Now let's go to endometriomas. They occur in 17 to 44% of cases. Laparoscopic excision is the gold standard and that is what is recommended. After a surgical excision, the recurrence of endometrioma varies between 6% and 30%. At present, there are no guidelines regarding what is the best surgery to do in a recurrence. And there is evidence of possible damage to the ovary and the removal of ovarian tissue that happens during surgery. Now, what is the aim of the surgery? And this is quite a unique study here. They used histology, they used ultrasound of the operated and the normal operated ovary and then studied whether excision of recurrent endometriomas is more harmful. Age is between 18 and 38 years old. They should have a monolateral endometrioma greater than three centimeters. 28 cases were operated, 17 were primary, where this was the first surgery. 11 had a previous cystectomy done, where cyst wall stripping was carried out and the, the interval of recurrence was, there was a mean interval of recurrence. So it was quite a well conducted study which looked at what happens with these 11 cases with a previous cystectomy. Now in this case cystectomy was done, cyst wall was stripped. In addition to stripping the cyst wall, a two by two centimeter specimen of the cyst wall was sent for histology and was checked by a pathologist who was blinded to the specimen sent. Now these were graded and these were graded as zero showing no follicle seen, one only primordial follicle seen, two primordial and primary follicle seen, three some secondary follicles and in four normal pattern seen. Then at a follow-up, the antral follicle count was done between day two and day four, and this was three months after surgery. Now, when you look at the results, the histological parameters of the endometric cyst wall was studied. Endometric tissue in the primary surgical group and endometric tissue in the secondary surgical group differed. Ovarian tissue in the primary surgical group and in the secondary surgical group differed. And what was seen, as you see on the slide, is that the endometriotic tissue as well as the ovarian tissue were higher in re repeated surgery. And what it means is that when you do repeated surgery, you're more likely to take away more endometriotic tissue, but also your endometric tissue will contain some amount of the ovary. There were no recurrences seen at follow-up in these cases. Now, the antral follicle count was also seen. They looked at the antral follicle count in the primary surgical group and the secondary surgical group in the operated ovary and also in the contralateral ovary, in the other ovary. And what they saw is that in the recurrent group, 
they saw a decrease in anterior follicle counts in the operated ovary, which is quite evident because you already, this ovary has gone through a second surgery. But surprisingly, the anterior follicle count was also reduced in the contralateral ovary. And that is something which you have to keep at the back of your mind. Now, when you come to discussion of this paper, the recurrence of endometrioma ranges to almost 50% in four to five years. Pregnancy rates after second surgery vary and there's no certainty. I reviewed this paper of Rafi et al, which showed that there was more than a 38% reduction of AMH after surgery. And at present, there are no studies which have evaluated the effect of repeated surgery on ovarian reserve as compared to the first surgery. Now, if you look at Jack Donez, and he reported that when you take the cystectomy, when you take the cyst wall away, then you damage you the ovary which is adjacent to it. And the ovarian tissue can be seen in the biopsies. And the question comes is, do you avoid excessive stripping? Now, the most important thing is as surgeons, and I do a lot of endometriomas too and endometriosis, and what is important to realize here is when you see a plane of dissection and you cannot identify the plane of dissection, and you see those cases where you've been trying to strip the, the cyst wall and the cyst wall does not come out at all. It is in those cases where you have to have a rethink because here it is noticed that almost from 44 to 84% of cases, you will see significant amount of ovarian tissue. And that is something which you need to remember that if it starts getting more difficult, you may take a step back and say, hang on, I may be damaging this ovary a bit more. Now, when you compare the when you compare the primary and the secondary surgery, recurrent endometrioma showed a larger thickness of the cyst wall and hence the tissue to 1.7 millimeter compared to 1.1 millimeter. It was also noticed that the anterior follicle count and the ovarian volumes were also significantly lower and the contralateral ovary, the ovary on the other side, which has not been operated, was smaller after second surgery. Now the question which is asked is why does surgery on recurrent endometrioma is more harmful? Now there are multiple reasons and one of them is that in fact a lot of us believe and it may be true that recurrence of endometrioma is a more aggressive form of disease probably and that is behaves in a slightly different manner. The ovary may be damaged in the first surgery and there all, already may be a significant amount of damage done. The other thing that we notice is there's fibrosis and fibrosis after the first surgery may render the second surgery more difficult and that's what you observed. You don't see the plane of dissection. You start stripping more. You tr you, there's more bleeding because you're taking away fibrous tissue which is adherent and also we know the longer you keep the endometrioma, there is some more damage that occurs to the ovary due to the free radicals, reactive oxygen species, which is a new thing which has been coming up. And these may be increased in cases where the ovary has an endometrioma for a long time. The other question asked is, what is the role of medical treatment in all this? A lot of it advise and say, oh, come on, let's give us some Zordex, some gonapeptil or Prostap, or let's put them on the pill. But in fact, there has been no study which looked at medical treatment in recurrent endometriomas and the ovarian reserve. Is there a role of medical and surgical treatment? Very frankly, we don't know. Do you combine excision with ablation burning? Maybe. Do you excise the cyst wall? Yes, it is preferred to avoid recurrence. And the question would come up is in these cases, it may be better if you're planning to go ahead with IVF treatment or fertility treatment, 
that it may be better to burn the cyst wall rather than strip it, knowing that after second surgery, there will be a dramatic drop in the antral follicle count. Now, when we look at this study, it was a small study, and that is one of the negative points of this. It also suggested that if fertility, the patient comes to you and says, and I often ask them, what do you want? And they say, oh, I want to have a baby. In those cases, IVF is the preferred option. But if the patient says, I'm in a lot of pain, then surgery is a must. And that is where you have to look at what reserve you have, what is the AMH, what is the antral follicle count, how much of an tissue is remaining before you plan that second surgery. And let your patients know. We try our best to help our patients out. And sometimes it is not good enough for the disease is far more than what you had anticipated. And in those cases, I've always said counsel your patients, let them be aware that a surgery may not go as planned. Uh, thank you again for sending a lot of questions, which is very good. I do get sent uh, questions. I'm more than happy to answer this question generally on a Thursday when I'm on the NHS. If you want to come to the course which helps you to come to the Homerton and then do four days of quite intensive teaching of the protocols and the various other options, then you can contact the IBC which is runs courses and I put the email here. But if you just want to ask me questions, please be free to drop in those emails. But please add a certain history. You know, I sometimes get asked questions by saying, I've given two blood tests and what should we do? I am grateful that you think I can re-give you answers on two or three blood tests, but I need more data. And as much as data you can give me, I enjoy going through a difficult cases and in some cases, I may be able to help you. Thank you very much. Hope to see you again next week. Bye.